Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Right when you come in the door is this very fun, very bright, very festive space with a certain amount of vintage fashion and vintage everything. I like the Cypress Knee Lamp, of course. I always notice those because of my Florida connections. Cute octagon display cabinet for $98 with all the little dogs for sale in it. And there's your, you've got some fancy, funky, fun finds, Columbia, Missouri. So now we're walking back into the next showroom. I told you this place is a lot bigger than it looks on the outside. This is a fun little interior here. I like the couch very much. And I love, this is not old, but it's Franciscan Starburst pattern in fabric. That is really fun. And let's see if we can figure out how much this couch is. It's been marked down to $675, which is completely fair. It's very clean. And it's got nice low lines. I don't believe it's by any designer, but it's just a nice looking piece anyway. I really like these guys. The Swashbuckler Buccaneer bookends. They're supposed, they look like armor bronze, but they're very, very lightweight. So let me see if we can read this label. Adams, yeah, see. They are ceramic. They're really nicely done, but at $60, they would have to be armor bronze for me to buy them as a reseller. Look how cute the polka dots are in this quilt, the way they've done it. Looks to be some sort of a modified pinwheel. I think they just sort of did whatever they felt like as far as shapes go. They're not, ex I guess they are uniform. It's interesting how there's this exaggeration. I wonder what you would call this pattern. But it's interesting and I love the colors. It's very vibrant. And they only have $32 on it. Here this is laid out. It's an interesting design, a little bit odd. The colors definitely look like they're 1950s and prior. I like the polka dot and when you flip the back, the back, is all polka dot. So for $32, I think I have to have this. Stuff like this is what makes it fun to shop at antique malls in other parts of the country. I would not have expected to find this here. This place has a bunch of quartz slabs and geodes, all priced in the $25 to $35 range. Down here is an unusual piece. This is a railroad Morse code receiver. Used to be every railroad station had one. Most of them went to scrap because they were made out of brass, so they were melted and reused during the war, so you don't see a lot of them. This one is made in Italy, and it is $295. Some of you folks may be old enough to have had your school picture taken with one of these devices. This one is a school photo camera, 80 bucks. Seems like a really good price, actually. It's universal lens by Ilex and it looks like it's a twin lens so it's a big piece but if you're a serious camera collector that seems like it'd be a great deal. Lupor Company, a tin race car with the original red plastic bubble top it says. $88 American made, that seems like a pretty good price for that. Unusual and a company we don't see very often. The prices have really come down on this and it's such a fun pattern. I think people will start picking it up again. This is Hull's Butterfly from about 1955. There's the Hull label on there. And this vase is only $22. They definitely sold for a lot more back in the 80s and 90s and they have everything that I would think a modernist decorator would like. So I suspect that these will come back into favor. I'm almost tempted to get it at this price. In the Midwest, you are going to see metal toys. A lot of these were made in the Midwest. A lot came from Iowa and the areas around the Quad Cities. But there's a really great selection here by a bunch of different companies. Let's get a little close so we can see a little more detail. This one's a Dupke Euclid down at the bottom. This dump truck apparatus here, priced at $190. This is Nylint. And this was Adams who authorized the model for Nyland. This is the travel loader. This looks like about 1960, 295. I really don't run into that one very often, nor the Pettibone 
speed swing. Now you notice this is also by Nyland. It's a little bit more worn, so it's priced at 135 The Mini Tonka with the original box. This is going to be from the late 70s, early 80s. $85 on that. Lion Van Lines by Smith Miller. That's in pretty great shape from the early 50s with the plastic cab. $265 on that. This one's Model Toys. Depke Highliner. Now these were made in New Jersey. So... They did make them in various places around the country. Mound, Minnesota for Tonka. I like the cement mixer. I always wanted that one when I was a kid. Priced at $159. Behind the googly-eyed fish is very nice amber bohemian glass cut vase. This looks like it has some age. $48. The reason for that, yes, it's got the acid etched mark from... Czechoslovakia, but it's got a chip on the rim. And then this dealer has a modernist look over here too. I like the dining set, particularly the chairs. I think the way they redid the pads is very acceptable. They probably needed it after many, many years. These are steel case. They made really good designs. They still do, and they are asking 125 each on the chairs. Now here's a piece of Louis glass. This is a 1930s shape. A lot of people, because it's lighter weight and a little thinner than some of the depression glass and has this reeded handle, mistake it for 1980s. So you can sometimes get a bargain. This one is priced at 120 with all of its tumblers. That would be full retail, but the tumblers are really cute too. It's a great set. Uh, this color was very popular in the late 1960s and actually all these pieces are Westmoreland this great pattern here with the tri-foot the open lace is a piece we see pretty often from them in milk glass they have 125 that seems like an old school price on that and this one is priced at 50 and Blue Willow has been made for two centuries, but these really thick cafe ware cups were made in Japan in the 50s for American restaurants, and so they're a little more durable and have a collector who specifically just wants restaurant ware in Blue Willow. There are people that specific about it. These are priced at $17.50 each. Cafe ware can still sell for a premium. And here are some vintage airline models. This B-47 with the stand for $95 is a good price. It's just a little chip, but it actually is still a good price for what it is. That would sell in Seattle, absolutely. The F-105 Thunder Chief, that's a really neat presentation model. And that one is priced at $495. It's very large. From about 1960. Taylor Smith Taylor made the Lou Ray pastels in the 1930s based on the colors in the Lou Ray caverns in Virginia, which I've been to. They're really neat. And yes, they are showing these colors inside those caves. It's amazing. These prices are pretty good too. $7 for the salt shaker set, $10 for the vegetable bowl. The platter is 16 I mean, the prices really haven't changed on this in years, and it is still a pattern that people like to collect. And then we disappear into a third chamber. I told you this place was huge. Nice tulip base table for $120. I mean, it's just Formica, and it's not the designer version of tulip base, but it's close enough that if you were wanting to have this sort of style, that's a good price to start with. Not everybody can afford designer furniture these days. The prices have gone way up. This is a darling little stove from Magic Chef from about 1930 when they first really started going to gas stoves that looked a little bit more like what we use now. Turn out fire before closing cover so you could close the cover and then just have a nice work surface instead of all those burners in your way. So they solved some of those problems before we came up with ceramic stovetops. It's just you had to pay more for it and not everybody would. This is only priced at $275 and I'll bet it still works. And there are people who still use these old stoves. I have a friend in a 1920s apartment in Seattle. They've never changed the stove and it works great. One last chance to try to find some more Fenton before I go to the show in Ohio.
I will be doing the convention. Probably this video will come out after the convention is over. I don't think I'll be taking any of these pieces. They seem to have gotten the memo on the Burmese and custard glass, so their prices are way up there. This guy's got a really interesting case. He's got Russian banknotes from around the time of the revolution or the end of the Tsars. World War I and Imperial era, Russian belt buckle in the middle there. And the hat device on the right, which is a little hard to see in the glare there. Now it comes in. The garrison hat. It's interesting to see a lot of things from World War I because, you know, that's over 100 years ago now. So we're really looking way back in time and a lot of this is already in collections. I have to say the prices do not seem unreasonable for the types of things that they have. This World War I Turkish bayonet with the scabbard and the original frog were actually uh, for the Ottoman Empire but made in Germany. And you see that terrible serrated blade. 270 on that piece. The original Doughboy helmet with the ghost paint of the 30th Infantry Division is $85. This seems like a pretty good deal. $14 for the Patriotic Ice Bucket and Six Glasses. This is definitely out of the 1970s. That's so inexpensive, I think I have to buy it. We come from France. Now, this is not a cone head. This is actually the tip of a Convair missile and it is metal underneath. I do not know who decorated it with this fabric or why. It seems very deliberate, so I would need to know more about that. But that is something you would be the only one to have. The tag says it gives you that Dr. Strangelove look, which is just what I'm going for. It's cool though, 349. I guess it could just be sculpture the way it is. Ah, oh, look at this. The shade needs to be replaced with one that's a little bigger, but this was from Henriette's Bowling League. She bowled for the Alley Cats, and apparently she was pretty good because she bowled a lot over 200, and she put her little awards on this base and made a lamp out of it. This is a great plastic fantastic light from the 70s. I don't believe it's Sonneman. I do think this is a designer. It's priced at $75. If I can figure out who it is, that could be a pretty good price for what this is. I bet this works like a charm. It's a Florence gas heating stove from about 1940. We lived in one old apartment when I was a kid very briefly in Bremerton, Washington that had something that looked like this. It took up a lot of floor space, but boy, it heated that place in about 10 seconds flat. This is $105. It probably has asbestos in it. However, if you were to hook this up and use it, that probably isn't going to escape into your atmosphere as long as you leave it shut. If you are missing that great old army hospital food, well this Shenango dinnerware will help you remember those wonderful days where you couldn't wait to get better and leave. Jeanette Glass made the Sierra pattern in the 1930s. It's a great pattern and this bowl at $19 because it glows under a black light and has such a great design is probably a really good deal but you got to make sure because there's so many ridges that nothing has a chip. I see a straw mark in there that is a line but that's a, not a crack that's a factory flaw. We'll have to put this down and really run our palms over it. Your fingers, remember if you haven't seen me talk about this before, don't use your fingertips because you won't notice all the little chips. You get calluses on your fingers. Use the palm of your hand and you'll catch even little tiny nicks. We are just outside of St. Louis and this line of Melmac Branch Hill has a great design and an interesting story. It says in very tiny letters designed by Kay Lemoyne. Kay Lemoyne worked for the fellow who started the predecessor company to Branch Hell designed these around 1950 for him. Caleb Wayne came from Topeka, worked for Dunbar Glass in West Virginia, and then ended up coming to the St. Louis area and doing these designs in the late 1940s. They were so successful and so modern. We see a little bit of Art Deco influence, and the shapes are sort of a post-war art modern style. And they're $12 for the set. They made some really great colors too. Now, if you are interested in memberships, we have different tiers with different benefits, including priority response to comments, 
early access to videos and live chat. So please check the join box to look into that or check the listing in the description where it says memberships. Well, this is a first and yes, I desperately want to sit in it, but he's asked us not to. In fact, he says the pyro charge has not been removed. And then he says, just kidding. But what he's referring to is this is a B57 ejection seat a suborbital ride for a mother-in-law. Aw, he must not like his mother-in-law. It helps when you get a good one. This is really fun. It's so interesting to me to see oddball things like this that you would never expect to see in an antique mall. That one looks a little narrow, but I could see where maybe with some adaptation you could make a theater chair out of that. They also have a bunch of this stainless steel luggage. Condition matters with this stuff, but if it says Halliburton and it's stainless steel and it's from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, it's worth money in a vintage market. They do showcase a lot of furniture in this mall, which makes sense because they're very close to Columbia, Missouri, which is a fairly large city and a university town. And they also are exactly, almost exactly, halfway between St. Louis and Kansas City. So, great location. Seaver Street from Columbus, Ohio. $20 for that old sign. Now, collecting cast irons and specifically collecting trivets is something that I've seen over the years. You see a lot of this Geneva, Illinois, but then you start getting to more obscure brands. This one is the Cleveland Foundry Company, because almost any steel company that made any sort of housewares would make these. Fun area, and these are priced pretty reasonably. I mean, this one's only $4.50. Well, that was fun. I took the Sierra Bowl up to the counter, and the woman who is working there said that she is a new viewer, and that she, even though she's been doing this for 30 or 40 years, just did her first antique show and I'm very excited. It's great to see people getting into the shows and the real world of antiques and vintage because we need all of it to work for all of it to keep going on. She also said something interesting which was that she learned the valuable lesson of figure out what kind of a show it is because it was more of a craft oriented uh, show with a lot of handmade items and that's a little different customer and what you would bring to that show would be different than to a mainstream antique show. I just said the other day that getting one of these rotating parts cabinets is on my bucket list. Well, this one's $550, so that lets me out, but someday. These are cute, but they are retro style. They are not old. The simulated wood grain is interesting to me. I never thought I'd see anybody bring that back. But if you look underneath here, it's a heavy laminate with a brand new label from the surgery clinic and the dealer has said retro style so they're not trying to pretend that it's old it's just something to show you because you might see one out there without a label and think that this is actually vintage mid-century I just got this set of glasses they have 59 on theirs mine's new in the box but it doesn't have the caddy because those didn't actually come with the caddy originally as popular as parts bins are right now, I would say $20 each is a pretty good deal on those. Everybody wants to organize and sort. This is $149. It's been repainted, but I love the pink fake quartz for mica top. And they've got the industrial and the metal and the kitchen metal. Some interesting corn stick pans. I saw various cool looking biscuit pans, they've got some barn fine stuff, and then this steel case cabinet that rolls, priced at $5.49. Phone from car, Southwestern Bell. Yes, this is when we're starting to see the end of the payphone booth, and this one is $149. A stainless steel in a broiler with an alu a stainless steel boiler with an aluminum lid. That's something different for seventy-five dollars, not the usual copper. 
here's another wall of these various framed advertisements. They are fun graphically. Look at this great toaster here. This one has the Trilon and Perisphere. This was inspired by the New York World's Fair. See the design in the bottom. And it is the Sunbeam design with the round top for $59. Behind that is the Treasure Craft Pig with Bunny Cookie Jar. Never quite understood that juxtaposition, but this is only priced at $22. It's actually a very good price for what it is, and it's in good condition. Now these are a little smaller size, but a lot of these are Buddy L, and Buddy L is out of the Quad Cities area. This marks on the left here has been restored. It's priced at $160 with the restoration. Structo Mobile Crane has not been restored, and it's priced at $120. Then you have this very modernist late 70s, early 80s Texaco tanker truck for $48, and yes, this era is starting to be collected as well. And then around the corner here, I really like this little vanity bench. It's priced at $100, which is about right. I think these were made in New York by Rialto, the same company that made the Lucite purses in the 1950s. This dealer has a few fun things in here. I like this ice bucket. This is a great pattern. $20, that seems like a good price. Let's see if we can see who did this one. I don't think it's a Georges Briard. It doesn't have the signature that I can see. I like the use of the playing cards as tags too. That's just fun. It makes it easy. You know, sometimes you have to do something. I should make mine more distinctive. I really should work on that because sometimes people have trouble spotting the tags when you have a lot of stuff. And then these little Hummel-like figures in the Rhine wine glasses there, only $8.75 a piece. The Monk bookends, boy he has a rather frightening countenance, $18. Old Mexican pot there. Oh, I'll bet this would be a neat rain chain. I have one at one of the houses that I stay in. If you are traveling through I-70, there's a lot of good antiquing along the route. It's one of my favorite stretches, and I could spend a few days covering this area, but maybe you'll get a chance to do it before I get through the rest. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!